Hello and welcome to Harlequin Books and Cooks. I'm your host Camille Archese and this is the show where we get to know the authors behind some of your favorite romance novels while whipping up something delicious in the kitchen. Joining me today is Reese Ryan and we're making my bacon cornbread with double jalapeno honey butter. Yep, you heard correctly. Definitely you want to stick around. Her latest addition to the Bourbon Brothers series, The Bad Boy Experiment, is available now everywhere and is such a fantastic read. She's an advocate for diversity in fiction and has over 20 novels under her belt to date. Please join me in welcoming to the show, Reese Ryan. Hi, Reese. Hi, Camille. How are you? I'm so glad to be here today. <laughs> I'm great. It's so nice to have you here with me. Thank you. I'm looking, really looking forward to making this meal today. All right. All right. Now, the first thing I like to know before we get started is, do you do a lot of cooking yourself at home? I do. We love to bake. We bake a lot of things, um, all kinds of cookies. As a matter of fact, my husband made homemade cookies in the, uh, uh, the refrigerator I'm going to have later when everybody leaves. <laughs> and we cook all kinds of cookies, but I also just like cooking different meals. And we've been experimenting with those meal delivery boxes so that we can you know, get some variety. So. Yeah, that's such a great way to be introduced to new dishes is those meal delivery kits and also cooking with me on books and cooks, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, this is definitely a new recipe for me, so I'm excited. Oh, amazing. Well, I read that you live in North Carolina, right? Yes. And that's a state known for its southern barbecue. And I wanted to make something that goes good with that barbecue. So today we're going to make something really decadent, but really simple. We're going to make my bacon cornbread with double jalapeno honey butter. Okay, Reese, let's do this. Let's go to your big bowl and we're going to add all the dry ingredients and whisk them together. I was doing my sea salt here. <laughs> I love using sea salt, but that's the one thing is you have to like grind it first and then measure. <laughs> This is a very simple recipe. Like, yes, there are a lot of ingredients, but they're all really basic, easy to find things. And it's all about how you combine them. So next we'll go in our smaller bowl and we're gonna do all of our wet ingredients. So into the bowl is gonna go the milk, the egg, and the oil. Okay. Now I'm using grapeseed oil. You can use canola. You can even use coconut oil if you wanted, or if you only have olive oil, you can use that. As long as you don't mind the flavor, you can use it in this cornbread. All right, got the wet all mixed up and the dry all mixed up. Perfect. So let's just add the wet ingredients to the dry and stir them together gently just until combined. And now we're just going to fold the green onion, corn, and cheddar into the batter. So now's the easy part. The batter just has to rest for about 10 minutes. And that's a really important step for having a nice and tender cornbread. Because what's happening is the, the kernels of the corn that have been ground up, they're going to now swell and take on some of the egg liquid and the milk and the oil, and it's going to kind of soften. So now we just have to let the batter rest and we're going to carry on with getting our pan ready actually. And I have a trick for making it really easy to lift the baked cornbread out of the pan. Do you want to see what I did? Yes. So you cut a strip of parchment paper. As long as it is, you know, somewhat the width of your pan, it really doesn't have to be perfect. And then you leave an overhang on both sides so that when it bakes, you just easily lift it right out and you don't have to do any struggling. But if you're buttering the pan, you're probably fine. This is just my hack for any time I bake anything from brownies to a banana loaf. It's always this. That is genius and I will be doing that for the rest of my life. Thank you very much, Camille. <laughs> you're welcome. I love that you mentioned that you're kind of a little bit of a northerner and a southerner. You mentioned Ohio and yes. I'm hearing you talk. It's funny because some moments I hear more of like a southern twang and then I'm hearing some of the northern stuff. So 
What's going on? Yes, my mother is from the South. I've lived in my mid the Midwest my entire life, and I've been down here about 12 years. So I have a little bit of everything going on. <laughs> and it probably depends who you're around, right? Yes, that definitely makes a difference too. Totally, totally. And I read in your bio that you judge your day by how many bless your hearts, bless your little hearts you hear. <laughs> Did you get any today as yet? I have not gotten any today as yet, but that's only because I haven't left the house. <laughs> so. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So Reese, The Bad Boy Experiment is the sixth book in the Bourbon Brothers series. Why do you think that this series is so popular? Because if you're on book six, I'm assuming people are really loving reading this one. <laughs> um, I feel like I, my stories are very character driven in this series particularly. And I think um, that that's kind of what helps. I love writing flawed characters who, even though they've experienced the measure of success, they're still searching for something. They're still discovering things about themselves. And I think readers appeal, that appeals to a lot of readers. I think also the fact that I typically write characters who are about mid thirties um, also appeals to a swath of, of readers who want to see more characters in their thirties and beyond as romance heroes and heroines. So um, I think that's part of the reasons that this uh, series has, you know, struck a chord with a lot of people. That's a really great point. I never thought about that, about the demographic of the characters in the romance novels, because yeah, I did notice that it was like, you know, they were a little bit further along. They were a little bit more established. Uh, the main character had her son. Uh, was it Mercer was his name? Yes. Exactly. So it was kind of nice to see people who are meeting at that point in life and knowing that it's still possible to find your happy ending. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about writing romance, period, is, you know, giving all these different people in all different walks of life and situations their happy ending. And so... Um, yeah, it was fun doing that in this book for sure. That's awesome. So into another mixing bowl, we're going to add our softened butter. And then we're going to go in with all the other ingredients that we've pre-chopped. We've got our two kinds of jalapenos. We've got the fresh ones that are minced up and the pickled. So it's two sticks of butter. So it's plenty of butter. <laughs> yeah. It works better when there's more butter, when there's this many ingredients in it. Yeah. I learned the hard way. <laughs> but I, I like that because, um, you know, when butter is good like this, it runs out quickly. So <laughs> it's good to know that there's going to be plenty of it. And now let's go in with our bacon. Let's also get our sweetness into the butter. Let's add a tablespoon of honey. Oh yeah. A little salty, little sweet, little spicy, my favorite. And then just mix it all together. I find a rubber spatula is a great tool for this, but use what you got. I like that. That makes sense. How's it going with your uh, butter making? Are you all combined? This is it. This is impressive looking butter here. <laughs> Gorgeous. And if you wanted, and if you wanted to get fancy, you could do the little trick where you roll it into some parchment into like a little log and you twist the ends and keep it in the fridge. This is a great thing also to give as a gift to somebody. Like why not half it and give it as a gift with maybe half or some of your cornbread? You don't have to give all of it away. I think I am going to try to do the little log just because I'm feeling fancy right now, you know? Let's pause and get our cornbread in the oven and then we can do the little log trick together. How's that? Okay. So I can put it in the pan now. Yep, I'm going to do that too. And we're going to bake it for in a pan this size. We're going to bake the cornbread for about 25 to 30 minutes and then take the remainder of your cheddar cheese, whatever you have left and sprinkle it over top. Just for a little something, something. <laughs> we like a little something, something in our room. In our romance books and our food. <laughs> it's right out of my mouth because there's a lot of something something in your books, especially in this one. There is a lot of something something. <laughs> I really loved, I really loved reading the bad boy experiment and I loved that um, the main character, she found uh, the, what was it, her, her aunt's diary? Yes. And, she, and her aunt had her own bad boy experiment, which I was like, huh. Look at this sauciness running in the family. I like it. I know, right? And it was a surprise. So, <laughs> All right, I can put it in now? Yeah, absolutely. 
area. Okay. All right, Reese, I'm ready when you are to roll our butter. Got it on the sheet. You're definitely comfortable in the kitchen because you're like way ahead of me. <laughs> I was just looking at the colors. It almost looks like something for the holidays. Totally. This is why I'm saying it's a present. Like I like an edible present, so this is totally my vibe. Now, Reese, I read that you've written over 20 romance novels. That is quite a bit. Thank you. It is. How did you get started? <laughs> um, how did I get started? Uh, I always wrote as a kid. And of course, you know, life came along or whatever and I did different things and it wasn't until later I got back into it. But um, I was doing some copywriting and another copywriter friend told me about NaNoWriMo and that's what got me writing fiction again. <laughs> so that's when I started and things just kind of rolled from there. But the thing that made me want to be a writer was um, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. That was the story that made me want to be a storyteller. Wow. And wow. so, and that, that, that story and Little Women by Louisa May Alcott still influence what I write because I always have, you know, a pretty large cast of secondary characters, lots of family drama in the story, usually a unconventional heroine. So, and it took a while before I figured out that, that those books still influ influence what I wrote. And how do you get your inspiration for the stories that you write about? It could just come from anywhere. Um, the series for the Bourbon Brothers um, was a combination of two things. One was learning about Nearest Green, who was the enslaved man who taught uh, Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. And then I saw a uh, story on uh, men who made America, I think it was called. Fascinating, it was like one of those docudramas, but it was like Ford and, and more, you know, all these different men who were so powerful in the past telling you about how they built their empires. And so I wondered what it would have been like had he been able to, Nearest Green had been able to create his own uh, whiskey empire. And so that's kind of where the Bourbon Brothers series was born. That's amazing. So you kind of like rewrote history almost. <laughs> so I just put the butter onto the parchment paper and started kind of like rolling it like a burrito. And I pulled toward me so that it would be a little bit tight, but you don't have to sweat it too much because once we twist the ends, once it's all rolled up, it's kind of all gonna compress toward the center a little more. And once you get to the end, you kind of just twist your wrist in opposing directions. And there you have it. And so Reese, when you're writing all of your stories, what is your setup? Like, do you have certain music playing? Do you have to be in a certain room in your house? How do you get inspired? So I actually have like four places in the house that I write, so I don't have a specific place. Um, my poor husband, he says, I have, I, have a, I have like four offices in the house. There's literally like four desks. <laughs> and so I can be just anywhere. I, music is a big part of it. Um, at certain points in the process, I can have music with words that's like related to what's happening. Sometimes I need to have only instrumental music because um, I can't have something distracting me because I'm singing, singing badly, but I'm singing. <laughs> and so that's distracting me, so I can't do that. So sometimes, but it just, you know, it, it just depends. But what I mainly am doing now is I am part of a writer's group. So I'm usually on Zoom with other writers. We hop on every morning and write most of the day. So we're, even though you think of writing as being a solitary thing, we've been actually writing together. So there's usually anywhere from three to 10 or 12 of us um, on writing at the same time and we do writing sprints. So that's actually been my most productive way to write of late. Oh, that's great. And is this the group that you also teach and mentor as well? Or is this a separate group? That's not the group I'm mentoring necessarily, but we do share resources. And um, so I do try to, whenever I can, share resources, share, share the mistakes that I've learned along the way <laughs> to maybe save other writers from making those mistakes and make their journey a little bit easier. Oh, that's the timer. Did you get yours going off? Yep. Okay, let's take our cornbread out.
Ooh, nice. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this smells so good. Reese, how's it going over there? It's so pretty. Well, let's hope it tastes as good as it smells and looks. <laughs> so cornbread is something you definitely want to eat when it's nice and hot. So I'm going to cut myself a little piece and get some of that butter on. What do you say? I love it. <laughs> Perks of the parchment, easy lift off. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's get some butter on this cornbread. Oh man, are you ready? And the thing with this butter is you want to make sure that you're generous with it, okay? So don't be shy. Hey, I'm in the South. We're always generous with butter. <laughs> so that is what we do. And then the butter kind of melts and soaks into the bread. And then all you have left is the little bits of jalapeno and the bacon. Are you ready to taste? I am. All right, let's do it. That's so good. Mm. I love that bacon. And the cornbread is perfect. So Reese, while I'm digging in some more, tell everybody watching what you're working on right now and what you have coming up next. I am working on the next book, my next book with Harlequin Desire, and it's going to be the first book in a brand new series that's a spinoff of the Bourbon Brothers series because uh, the Bad Boy Experiment is the, the last planned book in the Bourbon Brothers series. So stay tuned and see those characters again in this next world of the Valentine Vineyards. Awesome. We can't wait to see it. Reese, I'm loving this cornbread, but I need some feedback from a southerner. What do you think? I am loving it. I am a cornbread fan and I am loving the cornbread. It's just nice and light and fluffy and I love that and the butter is so good. And my plate is almost empty, so that should be a little bit of indication of how much I'm enjoying it. <laughs> that means I've done my job. Reese, it's been such a pleasure cooking with you today. Thank you so much for the company in the kitchen. I really can't wait to read your new book, so thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so much fun. Amazing. Thank you. I'd like to thank our guest, Reese Ryan, who made an incredible version of my bacon cornbread with double jalapeno honey butter. Her latest title, The Bad Boy Experiment, is available everywhere right now. And for this recipe and lots more, visit the link below and you'll get the full recipe. And when you make this, make sure you take a photo, post it on Instagram, and tag me at Kemi Cooks because we love to see it. If you like the video, hit the like button below, share and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.